All right, we're going to go ahead and get started because we need to stick to time. So um, welcome everybody to the Type Conference. It's an amazing first day. And our first speaker today on the People Track is Harley Goronsky. And your presentation is called This Thing Called Purpose. How do you show up? Holly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So welcome, everyone. This is exciting. I just want to let you guys know that um, I am very bubbly and I love interacting. and I love engaging. And so um, just wanted to share that with everyone. But I'm really excited to be um, to be here and to talk about something that I'm very passionate about. So a little bit of background about me is my nine to five is I'm an HR business partner, um, which is just a fancy name for HR consultant. Um, as an HR business partner, I come along leaders of the organization and provide guidance and support when it comes to performance management, workforce development, policies and procedures, engagement, which is one of my favorite, strategic planning, and most of all, employee relations. And that's just to name a few. Um, so basically, where are the firefighters um, around the company when a fire comes up? You know, HR is usually involved in it. Um, what I love about my, my job, my career, is that I'm able to impact individuals and not only support them professionally, but I get to support them personally too, because we all know that what goes on in our personal lives impacts professional in all other areas of life. And so if someone is experiencing something or going through something in their personal lives, it of course impacts their professional lives and how they show up. Um, so um, that is my nine to five. Now outside, outside of my nine to five, I'm also a podcaster. Um, this is where I truly get to apply my passion and my purpose. Um, and it's about motivating and inspiring women to tap and discover the ultimate purpose outside of home. So, um, so you're wondering, you're like, okay, this thing called purpose, like what, what is that about? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, so I mentioned that, um, what we experience through our life, our career, our personal um, life, it it impacts us and it translates to how we show up. So I am going to um, share my second slide. So um, we as women are phenomenal. We are amazing and we wear so many hats. And that means that we're mothers on the go. We're trying to make sure that you know, kids have food, uh, the household is taken care of. We are taking the kids to all of their extracurricular activities. Um, trust me, I understand. I have four kids. And so at any given point, none of them, none of them are involved in the same sport. So I'm always running around with my head cut off. Um, and we work. We have, we are professionals. We have career. Some of us uh, are mothers um, or stay-at-home mom. That's a job um, in itself. And so we're always juggling everything around us. So I always say, you know, the juggle is real. Um, and also, you know, we're wives, we're partners, we're colleagues, we're caregivers. Some of us are um, taking care of our elderly parents. And that is a, an amazing, an amazing, an amazing thing to do. And so we, at any given point, we are always taking care of our environment and taking care of the people around us, um, which is beautiful. But all of that also factors and contributes to how we show up. And um, one of the things as women that um, sometimes is left, um, we, we, it's not heard enough, is that we always go above and beyond and show up for everybody. I mentioned my children. And, you know, one of them is in involved in football. One of them is, is track and field. The other one is a gymnastics. And when I show up for them, I'm in the stands. I am the loudest parent. I am shouting. And I want to make sure that they know that I am here for them. I'm showing up for them and I'm supporting them. So we take care of our loved ones, um, whether it's elderly parents, whether it's children, um, whether it's our partners, our spouses, 
we're there supporting them and going above and beyond for them, um, being the ultimate cheerleader, right? And we oftentimes, because we are so put, we're putting out so much of ourselves, showing up for everybody, we tend to put ourselves on the back burn. Um, that's what we do as as as, as providers, and we have to um that is one of the things that we're going to talk about today is part of that like while it's great that we are showing up for everybody else but how are you showing up um and so i um you know i know that there are some people here in in the conference i mean women here that are managing just so much. And um, I know somebody in my personal life who is taking care of a sick partner who's being diagnosed with stage four cancer. And in addition to that, she also has a small a small child, elementary school age child, and, and she's a high performer at work. And so now her life revolves around her partner her child being so young and really kind of leading him through what they're going through as a family. And she goes at work and she's, she knocks it out of the ballpark, but she's completely exhausted. And sometimes um, when we catch up, she talks about how she's just at wit's end and she, she doesn't feel like anything can give. She can't stop taking care of her partner. She can't ignore her child and she has to perform at work. And so it's all on her shoulders. Um, and so we have those conversations and, you know, she struggles, she struggles with, you know, how do I say no? Um, what do I do about that? How can I still support my loved ones and, but still show up for myself? Um, and it's hard, it's hard to say no sometimes. And the first thing that we always do is the first thing, the answer to everything is that we automatically put ourselves on the backward. Um, so um it, it for for me my belief is that it comes down to purpose um is purpose it we it, as it comes down to purpose is we continue to show up for others we keep we keep giving a part of ourselves and by doing that we're not able to show up fully for ourselves um we go above and beyond if there's a soccer practice and a swimming meet going on at the same time and, and groceries need to be done, we're trying to figure it out. We're getting it all done, right? By golly, we're not going to drop the ball. Um, and I will tell you that I am, when it comes to that, managing all these pr different priorities, we women are, are notorious for just making it all happen around us. Um, and so I get it. I understand. Um Purpose impacts the way you show up. Not prioritizing ourselves causes us to disalign. Um, not getting in a rest um, can impact not only your physical, but your spiritual, your emotional, and the intellectual areas of your life. Um, so if you think about it, neglecting, you know, you come home, you've been at work all day, you picked up, you know, John from soccer practice, how to take him home. You picked up Brianna from gymnastics and, and then you had to get home. You had to do dinner, you had to do homework and you had to catch up on some work maybe that you didn't get to during the day. And then next thing you know, you turn around and it's 11 o'clock, right? And now you have to wake up tomorrow and press repeat and do the same thing over again. You didn't get a chance to unwind. You did not get a chance to work out. You maybe grab something on the go throughout the day, um, you were not able to get these other priorities that involves yourself, you weren't able to get them in. Um, and, you know, for example, um, when it comes, for example, neglecting the spiritual, physical, and emotional and intellectual parts of not walking your purpose will cause some disalignment in your life to, to, to bring it down to not being able to take care of yourself, um, self-care. Trust me, I get it. Like I said, I'm a mother of four. I understand the insanity that is called life. And if we're not careful about it, then it comes down to burnout. And of course, impacts how you show up. So, um, so okay, so we talked about how this impacts all these different areas of our lives how we show up. So 
we go throughout the day, we handle all this stuff, and then we get home and we realize, oh my gosh, I didn't finish this thing for work. So I get on the computer, we get on the computer and we finish it, right? And now it's 11 o'clock, it's 11.30. You wake up the next day, you didn't have time to work out. You didn't have time to eat a regular meal. Um, you, you have to run to the school because somebody forgot their lunchbox. Now you're running late for work. You show up to work. How are you showing up to work? Is your mind really on your work? Is it really on what, um, what the task at hand? If you have a meeting, have you had time to prep for it? For me, I will tell you, spirit of com complete transparency, no, my mind is not going to be at work because I'm having all this thing, all these things going on in my head, in my life, in my personal life that's impacting how I show up for work. Um, and so it's really important that when we start, when we make the decision and we make the commitment to show up for ourselves, I will tell you that um, my children and I do this thing. We go through this process at the beginning of the year, uh, at the beginning of every new year, is we write down on an index size card our goals for the year. And last year we were talking, you know, we were talking about doing these things and um, everybody wrote down what they wanted. And so then we went around in a circle and we said, okay, so now you are going to, you're going to say it out loud. What is it that you wrote down as a goal? So each child goes and they, they say what their goals were. And then they turn around and ask me and they said, um, mom, what, what is your goal? And I said, um, this year I'm going to focus on self-care. And they're like, oh, okay, what is that? Um, and so I went through the process of explaining to them what self-care was. And I said, I'm going to need your help. I am going to solicit your help. You guys are going to be my accountability partners and you're going to help me with the self-care piece. And they're like, well, how, how do we do that? We give you a massage or we start your bath? I mean, how, how do we do that? And I said, I need you to hold me accountable so that every day between the hours of 7 p.m. and 8 p.m., you don't bother me. You don't come looking for me. You don't ask me any questions. So um, I established a boundary in a window that said to them, this is the time that I am taking for self-care. This is the time that I am taking to show up for myself. This is the time that I need to be a good mother, to be a good worker, to be a good partner, establish that boundary. And in including them in that time frame, they were leaned in, they were bought in. They were like, okay, so from seven to eight, we can bother you any other time of the day, um, wink, wink. Um, but from seven to eight, we can't bother mom. And it came to a point where if I was maybe running a little late or if I was caught up in something and I'm like, okay, I gotta finish this 15 more minutes, one of them will come will come find me and they were like, wait a minute, you're, you're supposed, it's seven o'clock, like it's past seven o'clock, what are you doing? You're supposed to be doing your self-care time. What are you doing? And they became my accountability, they became my advocates um, for that time because they saw that I set a boundary around it and that they were holding me accountable to do what I said I was gonna do. And by doing that, I was able to have that time to unwind. We, we talk about how nowadays we have we have so much flexibility as far as work is concerned. Um, I work in a hybrid environment where I work in the office two days out of the week. And so I love it. It allows me the flexibility to go in, see my coworkers, but I also have some much needed time to do some work at home by myself. But prior to that, we were in the mindset of, you know, everybody went to work five days a week. And I had that commute for me, my commute, I live roughly about 45 minutes away from the office. So the commute for me was the time that I utilized to unwind, right? So I was in a car, I was alone. I took that time to unwind, to get ready for everything that I was about to go into, activate my mom, my inner mother. Um, so I utilized that time to, to unwind and to you know, build in some self-care time in that time. Well, once the pandemic happened, now my commute is from the office to the kitchen. And it was 2.5 seconds versus 45 minutes away. Well, I started seeing the impact of that. I started seeing how not having that separation um, was impacting 
my home environment was impacting my productivity at work. And um, so I I realized, you know, a few months into the pandemic that, oh my gosh, what, what is happening right now? So I think, you know, for some some individuals, some of you who had that community time, who doesn't have, who doesn't have any more, uh, don't have that community time anymore, you might have thought, oh my gosh, you know, that is so true because there was some separation there that was needed And once the pandemic happened, we didn't have that separation anymore. So it was like work mode, turn off the laptop, and then we go into home mode. And for me, I needed that time. I needed that separation. So building in that self-care hour time for me um, was very beneficial. It did a world of difference. And it impacted, of course, how I showed up, right? So now I was able to say, okay, I'm done with my self-care time. Now you have my, my my home has my undivided attention. I'm able to pour into my kids, make sure their homework is done, dinner is done, and everything's prepared for the next day. So um, improving, showing up for yourself impacts a lot of different areas of your life. So it improves physical, mental, social, spiritual, and emotional health. Um, it allows you to, be, to have a higher productivity at work, um, better cognitive and psychological abilities. Um, one of the things that I do um, that is not non-negotiable for me is that I have to work out. I have to work out every single day without fail. I know I did say that, but every single day I work out. And so for me, what I've done is it, my priorities in showing up for me to be able to show up 100 percent, for me to be able to show up and be leaned in certain things are non-negotiable that I have to do. One of them is working out. One of them is making sure that I meditate and I pray every single morning. So if I say that my faith is important to me and that is a priority, then I need to show that. And so what I do is I I wake up, I kid you not, um, at 4.15 every single morning and I get dressed for the gym and then I go sit in my office, my home office, and I pray and meditate for 30 minutes. And once I have done that, then my day can start. I'm in the frame of mind that I need to live in. And that's allowing me to live out my priorities. If I say that my faith is important to me, then I need, for me, I need to show that. And it impacts the way I show up. I'm not going to cuss out the guy who just cut me off in traffic because I prayed and meditated about it that morning. But um, I do that. And then I'm able to take on the day. And I see a difference when I don't show up that way. I see a difference uh, or the added stress that I have if I don't work out that day. Because now I'm stressed about it. I'm like, am I going to get it in? I'm I'm thinking about, I'm tense. Um, So it's important. And for me, um, scheduling can help and work towards that. And of course, soliciting um, your your, your, um, community around you to keep you accountable. So... I will, I I kid you not, there's been some mornings where I was like, I'm just going to sleep in and my husband will roll over and he was like, oh, so Supreme athletes, they train and they go to the gym and they work out every day. So I guess you're not a Supreme athlete. See how he did that? And I promise you that gets me up and I go to the gym, I go work out. So it's um, self-care is, so what I'm trying to say is that self-care is so vital to how you show up but you have to set the boundaries about around it. You have to set the bar and the expectation because if you're not taking it seriously, nobody else is, okay? Um, so, lost my mouse, okay. Um, so ways, um, it matters how you show up. So you never know who might be watching you, who else is struggling with that and is saying, oh my gosh, you know, what am I supposed to do here? Well, I see Harley and I see that she shows up to work and she's happy, she's bubbly. I wonder what she's doing. And they'll stop observing your patterns. They'll stop observing what you're doing and maybe even imitating it. Um, So you never know when you show up a certain way, who else is going to impact and where else it's gonna translate. Um, I can name a few organizations and I'm sure everybody on the fall on a, on a call can as well, but I can name a few organization or establishments that I go to and you know, they value how their employees show up. 
Okay, so I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. I don't know where everybody else is. So that'll be a cool little exercise to go through. If you guys want to pop in in the chat where you all are from, we can do some shout outs. But I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, and um, we're huge when it comes to Chick-fil-A, right? And I will tell you that if I go through that Chick-fil-A line, my expectation is that they're going to be smiling. They're going to be happy. They're going to um, take my order and they're going to tell me to have a nice day. I mean, that is my expectation when I go through Chick-fil-A. Publix, for instance, we have Publix grocery stores down here. Um, yeah, so I see New York City. I see, I'm probably going to butcher it, Stacy, but Peora, Illinois, Los Angeles, shout out to Denver, Scottsdale, Arizona. Keep them coming, guys. Um, so Publix, if you were to go to any associate in the store and you say, um, where, where, where do you keep your lemonade? I mean, you should know what lemonade is, but where do you keep the tomato sauce? They have to take you to the item in question. That is the experience that you will have when you are in a, in a Publix um, superstore, uh, grocery store. Um, so you know, and so you know that when you go to that place, you are going to have a certain experience because of how those employees or that organization values their employees showing up. Um, and so I, you know, for for those th for those organizations, I love going there because you know about the experience that you're going to have. All right? So we have Nashville, Tennessee. We have Boston, Massachusetts. We have Rita from Barcelona, Spain. Wow. Welcome, Rita. San Diego, California, place I've always wanted to go. Um, Daytona. Dayton, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio. Wow. I mean, this is amazing, guys. Um, so I'm going to start wrapping it up. But I want everyone to commit to showing up, to start showing up for themselves. And I know sometimes it can be daunting and like, oh, my God, Hardy, I just don't have time to do it. Well, here is something that I want to talk about real quickly. Showing up for yourself doesn't have to be, oh, my gosh. Um, I have to do an hour of self-care like Harley does. No, it could be 10 minutes. It could be a 15-minute meeting invite that you pop in your calendar as a private meeting and you say, you know what, for that 15 minute, I'm going to go for a walk around the house. Okay. Um, if you live in the in the neighborhood, there's a cul-de-sac. I'm just going to take a, take a walk around the cul-de-sac and that'll be a 15-minute walk that I'll be able to do. Get out, get out into the fresh air walk, do what you need to do. Woohoo! All right, Toronto, Canada. I'm actually born and raised from Montreal, Canada, by the way. So appreciate my Can my fellow Canadians on the on in the conference. Um read a chapter in a book. Um that could be easily 20 to 30 minutes um in uh, you know that of self-care or listen to a podcast. You know, maybe you're in your lunch break or 15 minute break, pop in a podcast inside the bubble with Harley G um, and listen to it. Or it could be something that if you're doing a mandate task at work that you could be actually, um, um, that you could actually be doing um, while you are listening to the podcast, while you are actually working. Um, catch up with a friend that you hadn't spoken to in a while and um, connect with someone. Um, definitely have an accountability partner. I tell you that some of my friends in my in my close circle, they know that between seven to eight, I'm actually doing self-care. So they won't call me between that time. Um, like I said, set those reminder invites and build those boundaries and involve your community into your self-care. And you'll see, they'll start holding you accountable. They're like, wait a minute, Harley, you said from seven to eight, you're doing, you're supposed to be doing self-care. What are you doing right now? Um, and have do something that you're going to be able to look forward to right so maybe you can't do something every single day but maybe you can book you a bi-weekly massage every two weeks um and then you have something to look forward to but do something um that will allow you to show up as your best self um and so i'm gonna wrap it up so i um love 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 i'm very passionate about purpose 
and how, how people are showing up for, to be the best selves, to be the best version of their selves. Um, oftentimes, I am um, in employee relations matters and I hear how people are really struggling um, and how to manage their time and how to, um, you know, show up in a, a certain way. And um, I would love to hear from you all if you guys have any questions or if you guys want to have some more conversations about showing up for yourself and purpose. Me today, I am currently, as I mentioned before, I'm an HR business partner, but I do have a podcast inside the bubble with Harley G. And it's all about purpose and motivating and inspiring other individuals, women, um, to show up for themselves and to follow their true purpose. So if you would... Um, like to continue to chat with me or reach out, um, you can definitely find me on Instagram inside the bubble HG, or you can always visit my website at www.insidethebubblewithharleyg. Um, and I would love to hear from you guys and see what you guys are doing. Well, thanks so much, Harley. We actually have a couple of minutes for Q and A. Thanks um, for such a great, um, uplifting, and inspiring presentation. So, um, one of the questions from the Q and A, if you're ready, is: um, Do you sacrifice sleep for your workout and meditation? Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. Um, I have to say that I, I, sometimes I do. I'm going to be in the spirit of complete transparency. Um, I'm trying to, I try to get to bed by a certain time. Um, so that way it allow me enough time to get the amount of sleep that I need to wake up in the morning and go work out. So yes, yeah, sometimes I do sacrifice sleep, but I'm doing much better at it. Um, and that is part of showing up for yourself is getting enough rest. Great. And another question is how long did it take you to learn that the self-care things actually helped you? And it seems like it takes a lot of patience to find what are the ones that work for you. Yes. So I definitely with self-care, it is, it's not one size fits all. Um, you definitely have to find what works for you. And sometimes it might be seasonal. So you may be in a season of reading. And so now for now self-care, what you want to do is you just want to read books, which is great. Or you may be in a season of listening to where, okay, now nah, I just, I'm into podcasts. So I'm just going to, find some podcasts that applies to and relates to my situations right now. And I'll listen to that. Um, and it evolves. Um, you may be, um, you may be in a time in your life where self-care now you're all about exercising. And so for you, it's going out for a walk or going out for a run. I'm a runner. I run half marathons. And so it, for me, that's part of it as well. Um, I think I saw a question and it said, do I have a podcast? Yes, I do have a podcast and it's called Inside the Bubble with Harley G and it's on all of the plat uh, podcast platforms. Okay, um, maybe one or two minutes left. Do you find that people resent the boundaries that you put up? You know, the thing is, the people that resent my boundaries are not the people that I would want in my direct community and support system, right? So because if you're part of my community, if you're part of my support system, then what I'm doing to be a better person, you should be happy with that. You should be cheering that on. I would do the same thing for you. Um, so that's that's my yeah, answer to that. Get rid of negativity in your life. Well, yep. um, thank you yes. so much, Holly, for a great kickoff to our people track. And you're going to still be mm -hmm. around in the networking sessions and people can um, communicate with you directly and find your podcast and all yes. that. So yep. great, great. Thanks so thank much. Thank you so much. All righty.